Welcome to today's episode where we will be focusing on women in real estate in Kenya. My name is Sarah Wahogo, CEO at Username Investment Limited. Today I will be answering your questions. So many questions have been coming to my inbox and I decided to address uh, some of them. The first question has been challenges faced as a woman in a male-dominated field and how you overcame them. So quite a number of challenges in this sector, but I like calling them manageable challenges because I find them quite manageable. And top of the list is the work-life balance because as a woman, many times you need to nurture a family as well as, you know, grow your career. And many times I have said that nobody should ever ask you to choose either. You can have both and you can be happy. So how I manage these challenges, number one is developing your skills and expertise. When you become an, an expert in your area, you find that you spend less time to be able to achieve the goals and the results that you intend to. Number two is building a strong network. Strong network is important because you, through networking, you also get to get mentors who can guide you in this journey and the journey becomes much easier. Number three is be yourself. Don't be limited to market stereotypes where probably it said that as a woman you cannot have a successful career in real estate and so on and so forth be yourself go after your goals lastly above all ensure you invest in yourself in all fronts and this could be spiritually mentally physically and emotionally the second question is how to maintain a work-life balance in a demanding field like real estate. In the first question, we have, we have picked work-life balance as one of the main challenges in this sector for women. So how to go about this is ensure that you set clear objectives and timelines. And this will help you focus on priority issues that gives you value. There's that what we call 80-20 rule, where you can be able to focus on 20% of the areas that gives you 80% of the value. Number two is time management. Ensure that you avoid procrastination and that you endeavor to do what you need to do when it needs to be done. That will ensure that you can be able to have a proper flow and ensure that you are able to achieve what you intended to achieve. Then number three is embracing technology. Technology is extremely critical because it makes your work much more easier and ensures that you can be able to achieve what you need to achieve in the shortest time possible. A good example is being able to generate reports at the click of a button and you don't have to spend so much time on the same. Lastly, taking care of yourself. You know, self-care is, is extremely important because it ensures that you are always recharged and ready for the day. The next question that has been very frequent is what advice would you give to other women aspiring to excel in the real estate sector? Number one is sharpen your skills, be an expert. Number two is find your niche. There are so many areas that you can grow in, in this industry. It could be as a surveyor, as a valuer, as a marketer, as a data analyst, and so many more areas that you can focus on. So you need to identify your niche. It could even be as a leader. So identify your niche and endeavor to grow yourself in, in that area. So next is build strong relationships. Strong relationships are important, not only in real estate, but in any other career. Because through networks, you can be able to, to get meaningful connections, mentorship opportunities, and even potential clients. Confidence and owning your voice, believe in yourself. For you to be able to grow in this area, you need to 
grow and own your voice. And this speaks to confidence. You need to be confident in your area to gain as much knowledge as you can so that you can gain a position or a seat at the table. So remember, there are already successful women in this field. Endeavor to learn from them. You are not the first. And endeavor to create meaningful relationships with these women who have come before you. So the next question is, what do you believe is the most significant trends shaping the future of real estate? And how are you positioning yourself to capitalize on them? So, of course, the most significant trends are technology trends. And one that has caught my attention is PropTech, where you integrate technology and properties. And this has streamlined processes, enhancing experiences and creating new opportunities. This has assisted in areas like uh, virtual tours where you can be able to do a virtual reality tour for probably assuming there's a property that you need to view and you, you are not in that area or you don't have time for a site visit, virtual realities come in handy. PropTech has also enabled data-driven market analysis and this is also changing how properties are bought, sold and managed. The next question, as a woman leader in real estate sector, do you feel a responsibility to mentor or support other women who would be aligning to joining the sector? I am always available for mentorship and trainings and I have been doing this for a while now and it's an area that I really enjoy, not only for real estate, but for women who would want to grow their careers in other different areas as well. Uh, the next question, how do you approach networking and building professional relationships within the real estate sector? This sector provides many opportunities for industry events like workshops, trainings, conferences, and I endeavor to ensure that I attend because through these uh, events, I am able to connect with peers, with people who have been in this industry longer than myself. We are able to share the challenges, the upside, the downside, and just to brainstorm on, on many things. Uh, the other area that I'm able to network is through social media. And one of the areas is through my social media handles. And probably even right now you're watching me through my social media handle. And I've been able to make meaningful relationships, including uh, meeting clients through this platform. The last question, have you encountered any gender biases in your career? And if so, how did you address them? Fortunately, I have not encountered any gender biases and it's a good thing because it tells me that any other woman can be able to make it in this industry. As long as you become an expert, you own your voice, you learn as much as you can, you rarely find anyone challenging your line of thought or challenging your voice. We have come to the end of today's episode. Thank you for tuning in. See you in our next video.